GTI Subaru. Right folks, so welcome back to another video. We're doing some Subaru content today. Today's video is going to be about all of the sort of bits that are wrong with it or stuff that I can see anyway and that I'm aware of. Uh, we did the reveal video a few days ago, so if you haven't checked that out, you will kind of be confused thinking where did the Subaru come from. It's a new project car for the channel, going to be alongside the GTI. Picked up quite cheap, paid around £1,750 for it. So it does have some issues, but in some areas it's actually quite good for the money. And uh, some of the bits were actually a motivation for buying this particular one. Uh, of course we're in my shed right now, there's no Subaru behind me, it's outside as you saw. There will be a lot of talking in this video, so be prepared, but don't worry all the mods and all the uh, wrenching and stuff like that will be happening very soon. But yeah, we'll just get started. So I think we'll start with the easy stuff first, the sort of visual condition of the car. We're going to inspect the paint up close and just look for any marks that we can see and any of the little bits that are broken or need work. This is Mika Blue, which is the colour that I did want. Uh, the gold wheels are on the way. Uh, but paint wise, it is a bit filthy at the moment. I haven't had a chance to clean it. There seems to be dirt fully ingrained in it. I believe this thing was sitting under a tree. The bonnet itself seems to be okay. With a nice polish, it'll probably come out quite nice. Got a, maybe a few hairline scratches there. Now these vents, they do seem to have a bit of a lacquer peel on them. So you can see here, the bonnet scoop, the one that feeds air to the top mind intercooler, again has some more lacquer peel on it. I guess you would expect this on a 20 year old car with, at this price anyway. Uh, we've got the headlights, which seem to be quite clear lens to be fair. I mean, they're not misted up anything. I believe the end one is a different one. Uh, the previous owner put in some crystal lights apparently that's a thing uh, all this subaru stuff is new to me middle grill seems to be okay no cracks in the mesh or anything like that we have got the horns behind it which do look pretty mashed i believe people upgrade to like hella ones and stuff like that but not really something that interests me now here we've got some sti fog lamp covers as i showed you in the previous video and the standard 2000 turbo bumper uh, but with the p1 splitter the p1 splitter itself does have a bit of damage uh, we've got maybe it needs a bit of a respray the paint peeling off there and there but structurally it seems okay i mean it's not like damage or anything we've got a spider web headlight washers and seem to all be intact we're going to check if they work in a bit we'll try and find the stalk this has been changed you can tell that seems to be holding okay maybe that could be a bit tighter now front wings i don't believe are an issue in terms of rust on these gca impressors pretty ironic i know because gti here front wings rust but the back is okay i'm gonna get onto the rear of this thing because it's like the opposite of the gti now moving on to the side just to get some of you guys up to speed if you haven't watched the reveal video the good thing about this car is that all of its rust repaired and is actually primed and ready for paint so along here seems to be all good i am going to get it jacked up i've got it here ready but we'll continue with the paintwork and then we'll get get a good look at the underside you can see here this um primer has been done to protect the uh, rust repair that the guy did and that's what the previous owner told me all looks quite solid all oh, you guys were asking and whether it's been done and if it's quite rusty underneath i believe it's all been repaired i'm going to show you the arches on the inside as well it's all been welded quite professionally so all ready to go mirror has this crack here but well, i'm thinking of replacing these for rally style mirrors you know the ones that are just like they don't have much of a outward swing they're just here and they're black or carbon they will be going on for sure give it that look and now one of the most important checks or buy an old classic subaru pull these down if i can't even do it with one and all right so here we go all right so some of you lot are worried about this being rusted all the way through but this is the repair that's been done on the car all properly welded up quite a good job to be filmed turns the light onto the bigger one so there we go so that's what the in inside of the arches look on this particular car. Same on this side pretty much, it's the uh, same thing you bought. Again, all good. You can kind of see now why I wanted to go for this particular one, even though it has weird wheels on it and unpainted sort of rear quarter panel. Like all because of that, all because of that. Because some of them I went to see, they were breaking all the way through. I mean, look at that, all solid, welded. The guy spent nearly a thousand pounds on that about three, four months ago. All I gotta do is basically tidy this thing up and do some mods and I'm good to go. Well, hopefully. There's a bit of rust up here. That seems to be the only one at the top actually. Nothing else that I've noticed externally. Similar issue with the window trims here on this side too. Paint's a bit perished on here. Now here's the weird thing. Where this rust repair has been done, it's all nicely, you know, finished off and whatever. And you see a bit of overspray over there actually. 
this side has got some overspray it doesn't clip in so maybe they've welded it in and this needs cutting in but it looks like a simple kind of fix get that in line that up it's good to go this needs paint as well but i'm gonna get that done so we'll all get it done together the front wing does look a bit out though i was just looking comparing to the other side if you look there the panel gap is a bit bigger so maybe this has been changed that's what i mean it may have had a fender bend in the past but the car seems to drive straight i have driven it but in terms of a proper drive yet to do it there's something about the engine bay that i need to explain and the reason why i haven't done like a first drive video yet so that's like the paywork condition uh the wheels are what we're gonna go over now they have got some mismatched tires on there so this one here looks all good you're like yeah it's got a pilot sport 4 on it all seems good i was thinking that too then you go on to the back one yeah it's got a conti sport contact 5 on here which is maybe half decent tire trade wise looks okay i guess it's not on bold or anything but it's, again mismatched tires are not a good thing for me especially in a performance car back right continental tire again conti sport contact 5 but then the front one where on the other side it's a pilot sport 4 we got some p0s here i mean yeah they're not like budgets or anything but still at the same time it doesn't really work for me condition of the seats now there doesn't seem to be any tears i don't know if these gca seats are known for tearing they look quite strong wearing to be fair kind of like a mesh kind of feel to them they definitely need a clean um, i don't know what's been going on in this car for the last 20 years so when you sit in here though it definitely feels like you're sitting in an old toyota corolla though the way all the smell of it is and everything there's probably only one hole here in the dash there seems to be nothing else going on to be fair some screws and whatever in there then we've got a sony okay fair enough in the last video i told that beep was the immobilizer about 50 of you lot told me it's actually the uh, sony stereo doing that so my bad i didn't know The sound on a Subaru man, boxer, unequal length headers. The car beat it man, especially for 1750 pounds. I know I've said it a few times, but this is how much I paid for this car. AC. All sorts of junk's probably gonna come through there, but seems to work all good. Different vents. We've got a, a switch here that says bright. You don't get switches like bright in a modern car these days. Off these that looks like oh that's the um headlight washers i did not know it had that that is cool man i'm not gonna lie you can actually press it anytime that's how you know it's a rally car <laughs> let me watch <laughs> all right all good and then here i believe is a mirror control so let's put it on the left one and see if it works Yep, all works. Right one. Does the right one work? Indeed it does. Little armrest here with some spark plugs in there. And plenty of dirt that needs to get out. Yeah, let's just turn it off for a sec. Okay, that works then. Right, so we're gonna get onto the exciting stuff now. So if you're still engaged with the video, fair play, it probably is a long one. Uh, but I thought I'd gotta show you everything with this one. The little twist I didn't mention in the reveal video, this car actually had a replacement engine in it. So, right, so this car has 130,000 miles or 130,210, probably a bit low for me. All checks out, that's not like fake or clocked or anything like that. Interesting thing though is the engine that's in this car actually has 80,000 miles in it, approx. There's a Sony bleep that you guys were telling me about. So, the guy who got it off the most recent previous owner he was a mechanic like i mentioned and he put the engine in himself uh he did the spark plugs when he was out because they're very they're hard to do on these things the spark plugs are right down it's a boxer engine it's a weird layout i'll open the bottom in a second and he also did the timing belt so all good in that sense i have been told that most subarus at this age will have had some kind of engine work or the engine will have gone or they had to forge it or the bottom end's gone there is one issue though uh mainly being the check engine light does come on this car every now and again i'll actually show you guys now what it is all right so here it is the ej205 two liter boxer engine four cylinder turbo the engine light i was talking about the main cause of that apparently is this completely mangled turbo inlet pipe 
so the guys tried to do a fix on it he did tell me at the point of sale you can see that it does look a bit you know iffy so we have had a replacement muff sensor according to him that is a thing that goes on these cars so i will take his word for it, I guess, until we've had the inspection at the Subaru Specialist. Then I might even just change that again. So here's the airbox. It goes around under the intake manifold and there onto the turbo. It's a really weird design. So changing that is very simple on a normal car. Luckily, I have a normal car right here, GTI. Another turbocharged four-cylinder, also two litres. The turbo is down there and this is the inlet pipe right here. There's nothing in the way. I've actually bought the replacement silicon pipe is here in the shed this is it here <laughs> so you can imagine getting this through that gap is going to be a bit of a pain on the normal car like the gti it wouldn't take any time at all to be fair it's a really minor job uh, but on a subaru for some reason i've got to do take off the intake manifold i've got to remove lots of hoses out the way maybe even take the intercooler off just to get more access to put it onto the turbo get a sort of get one of these in there to pull it on properly get a clamp on you imagine yeah this has got to attach onto there and go like that that's how it's going to go but underneath what seems to be the most tiniest gap i've ever seen this gap here so hopefully that will solve the check engine light dipsticks here quite a short one to be fair clean that off back in Uh, so the camera probably ain't going to focus on that but if you can see it's between the l and f so between low and full all good the car did have oil change in may so we are going to do our own again but it's good to see it has got oil in it all right so we got a glove on this is the cooler reservoir apparently then it says cooler over here too so there's like two different places to put cooler in on a, on a boxer engine yeah, there's definitely cooler in there I had to top it up, actually the guy gave me, uh, when we went to collect it, he needed a bit of a top up then. So the guy just threw it in, that's why there's a uh, bottle of coolant there. I'll try and get it to throw the check engine light now. I'll probably have to turn it on for a bit, leave it running. It's probably going to shake the foundations on most of this floor here, but we'll leave it running for about 5-10 minutes, hopefully it'll come on. Right, so I'm just going to move the car over here because it's echoing a lot of this wall. <laughs> it's that loud, I want to move it because... It's gonna be idling for some while. They wanna keep revving the car right next to the house. It's a bit anti-social. It is like a light that flickers. It doesn't stay on. Once it's on and you're driving around, because I took it around the block a few times and when I test drove it as well. Look, it's still not even on yet, so it goes to show it probably is related to the airflow. Because once it's sitting here, yeah, nothing seems to be happening. But we will wait. Here we are waiting for a check engine light to pop up. That's what the video is right now. Check engine light watch. There we go. See, I wasn't actually lying. There's a check engine light. Next, what we'll do, we'll move the car back into the bay and get it jacked up and show you guys the underside and try and get an idea of the rust situation. Control arms look like they have that surface kind of rust to them, a bit like the GTI. Again, stuff like that can be changed. Doesn't look decayed or anything, which is a good thing. Looks like it's got a new drop link there, which is not bad. Right up here, we've got some surface rust again. My professional opinion. If you look back there, you can see it's got a bit of under seal on the sills there. The sill is fully repaired from here, you can see. I mean, that jack input is a bit rusty but yeah i guess it's just been in use oil filter here looks quite new actually i'm not gonna lie guys it's quite an okay car underneath there's the exhaust all the way but sills look legit guys proper legit quite happy with that just this bit here and then that's probably used for the jacking point they all go like that apparently yeah folks i think that's pretty much all what i could cover to be fair especially at home anyway with the stuff that i can see um rust looks okay engine of course has a check engine light maybe due to the inlet pipe we will find out that's going to be an installation video coming soon and there's a few other bits to do we're going to do a full inspection video like we did with the gti get it up on a ramp we're going to go to a subaru specialist still deciding which one to go to and yeah just stay tuned for all that content to come this is probably the last of just pure talking videos the next one will be you know getting hands-on i'll get the socket set up but yeah just stay tuned for a lot more subaru content to come subscribe if you're new here 
drop a like on the video and I'll see you in the next one.